Governor, thank you for joining us. Happy to be with you. So yesterday at your press briefing, you said that there would be another announcement tomorrow. Uh, we're talking on Thursday afternoon. Can you give us a little bit of insight into what folks can expect you to say from the podium tomorrow? Yeah, so we're still figuring it out. In fact, all day today, we're in meetings trying to figure out the right way to do this, but it's going to be significant. I will tell you that. Uh, we, I think we are in our second wave and what is happening in, in the Midwest seems to be coming our way, if you will. And the swifter we act, the better off we'll all be. We've learned, I've learned this, I learned in the spring, the longer you wait, the harder it is. So I, I don't know exactly what it will be, but it will be significant because we have to try really hard to put a lid on it before it's a runaway train. That's the nature of this disease. It becomes a runaway train and then it's really hard. My concern, of course, is commerce. So many people are already out of work. I really feel for restaurants, small businesses. So for me, that'll, that'll be kind of a last resort. If I have to go there, I will. But I'm trying to, as I say, make that a last resort. But there's a lot of other things that can be done. I mean, the truth of it is, Kim, we are all just out and about too much. You know, we're all out and about too much right now. Too many social gatherings, wedding showers, baby showers, birthday parties, play dates, hanging out with friends. And, and you know, the reason I know that is because in our contact tracing, a couple of months ago, people had five or six contacts. Now it's like 20, 30, 40, 50 contacts. So we have, we have to rein it in significantly right away. And so what I can tell you is we have to rein it in significantly. So it's not gonna be a light touch. So not a light touch, significant changes. Are you suggesting that we go back to maybe sort of a, a curfew or a, a lockdown, a stay at home order? Not a stay at home order, but um, See, look, look, look with it in Germany, in Italy. You see it all over the world. By the way, you see it all over America. This is not unique to Rhode Island. Europe is reimposing lockdowns. Um, I think Germany is closing all restaurants by keeping schools open. So it, it'll be significant. Um, not a stay at home order. I need, people need to go to work. People need to continue to do you know, work-related or essen truly essential activities. But anything that's not truly essential, uh, I'm gonna have to ask us all to rein it back in. You don't really need to go watch your kids' soccer game or soccer practice. You don't really need to have a baby shower and invite 17 people over. You know, you just, it's right now, it's not forever. But if we do this in the, over the next few weeks, then maybe we can have a nice Christmas and a nice Thanksgiving and a nice end of year. How do you regulate that though? Is that looking it's like hard. decreasing the social gathering limit again, some sort of an executive order where you say no social gatherings? I mean, can you give us sort of an insight? I mean, yeah. the weekend is approaching, it's Halloween. Mm -hmm. um, I think folks, even the folks who want to follow the rules are feeling a little bit like, whoa, what, what does that mean? Where are we heading with this? So can yeah. you just give us a little bit of insight into what life might look like in the next 48 hours? Yeah, well, certainly by one o'clock tomorrow, I will have had to make some decisions and I would urge everyone to tune in at one o'clock tomorrow because I'll be providing some clarity. Um, the hardest part about this crisis from day one has been the uncertainty and the need for constant flexibility. So I'm just gonna ask people to continue to embrace that. Uh, but right now, what I can tell you is make a list, take out a pen and paper, make a list of the people you must be with, your kids, your immediate family, your few coworkers, and limit your interaction to those people. If everybody actually did that, we'd be fine. And wear your mask, and wear your mask. Anytime you're with anyone who you don't live with, wear your mask. How likely is it that you are going to decrease the social gathering limit tomorrow? Um, reasonably likely. On the mask wearing front, um, are you considering additional fines around that, making it 
More? I don't think so. I, I mean, we do have fines now, and they're pretty steep fines as it is. We are going to be looking to do more enforcement around fines. So until now, if you go into a retail shop or, a, I don't know, a restaurant and people aren't wearing their masks, we might just give them a warning. Now we're going to be fining the restaurant or the business uh, or shutting them down in the first instance because it's, 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 it's about enforcement now as I don't think we need higher fines. We're already pretty steep fines. Um, same thing for social gathering. This weekend, I've said so many times, no Halloween parties. If you're having a Halloween party and you have 20 people in your house and we find out about it and the authorities show up, every single person will be fined and the host will be fined up to $1,000 per person in your house. I wouldn't take the risk. What I've been hearing, uh, especially from younger folks and young adults is, okay, we cancel the big party, we're just gonna get together in small groups, seven or eight of us hanging out casually. That's a problem. That actually is our biggest problem right now. I'm asking you not to do it, or if you are gonna do it, wear your mask, even if it's with your buddies. Um, so, and if we find out that it's happening, then we're gonna get serious about enforcement. Phase two, was back in June. How likely is it that the next month or so is going to look a lot like June in terms of the restrictions? I mean, should we prepare for phase two again in the way that we experienced it in the summer? I think so. So think capacity so. of businesses will be decreased again? Possibly, yeah. Before walking in here, um, I was a couple minutes late, I was on the phone with the governor of Connecticut. He was saying their test positive rate is up to 6%. He said they're gonna be thinking about similar kinds of restrictions. I, you know, we're all trying to figure out the best thing to do. And so I don't know precisely right now what that is, but I think this whole region, I think our whole region is in for pretty significant restrictions so that we don't wind up like the Midwest or we don't wind up like Texas, that we don't wanna be there. And so that's, we're trying to figure out how do we avoid that doing the least damage to commerce possible. And that's why when I do get a little frustrated with people who say, I'm not gonna follow your rules, I'm sick of it. I hear you, I really do hear you, but I get emails or texts or phone calls every single day from restaurant owners who say, Gov, we are barely hanging on. Please don't close us, help us out. And the only reason I would have to do that is because all the rest of us aren't following the social gathering rules. So which is why if you don't want to do the right thing because I'm asking you to, do it for all these other businesses and people that are going to lose their business if you don't. I know you've been asked this question before, but I think it, it's worth asking again. You've been saying over and over again that the issues are with social gathering limits mm. and with these small intimate parties where people feel comfortable. But rolling back into phase two would really just I mean, the social gathering limit in phase two was 15, which we're still at, but it would really just focus on business capacity. Yeah. So is well, that the best? Well, there's places of worship. Okay. Um, sporting events. We are starting to see more and more cases associated with sporting, co sporting events and the congregating that happens around it. Would it completely eliminate sporting events? I or? don't know. Re okay. Really, I'm not trying to be evasive. Which all day, all night tonight, this is what we're gonna be sifting through. Mm. It's a, there's no magic. This is all judgment call. And it's, it's around the balance of uh, what will people do? What will they actually comply with? What we can enforce? How do we tamp down the cases and not hurt our economy? So it's, this is like a Rubik's Cube kind of a puzzle. Mm -hmm and I'm just trying to see my way through it to the best that I can. Anything else you wanna add or, or let people know at this point? Because again, I, just I think- Just the one thing about the restaurants, cause I hear you and I agree with you, um, they are on a key, they, if, if, if people went out to eat with the people that they lived with and wore their mask, you know, that would be fine. 
And by, I have to say, by and large, restaurants in Rhode Island are doing beautifully, really excellent compliance. The problem is um, a bunch of folks from work decide, let's go out for dinner tonight, six people pile in the car, nobody's wearing a mask, they go out for dinner, maybe they go back to somebody's house. That's the kind of stuff we have to stop. Governor, thank you. Thank you.